Big news this morning about two different plants that are now on strike. The UAW strike has expanded to a Sterling Heights facility plant in Michigan. This is where they build the Ram 1500 and also expanded to the GM's full-size SUV plant in Arlington, Texas. Those are two key profit generators for each company. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus, SUV Talk, and today is Tuesday, October 24th. I feel like putting a date in there because it's important because this news is happening fast. You can find more details of both these strikes on pickuptrucktalk.com. I just got both stories published. And so we're going to start with the first truck plant was the Ram truck plant. This happened on Monday. The UAW went on strike at the Sterling Heights assembly plant in suburban Detroit. Uh, that is about 6,800 workers. They are claiming that unsatisfactory proposal covering wage progression, temporary worker pay, conversion to full-time roles, cost living adjustments, other factors. The UAW, as it has, and other strikes has stated that the proposals just aren't getting better. And so until they get better, they're going to keep going on strike. And looking at the information on the strike, we can see that overall right now, when that strike was announced yesterday, we had 40,000 work, Detroit auto workers on strike. We've also seen healthcare workers, Detroit casino workers. We've had a lot of uh, people on strike currently. Now, this represents the first escalation in the union strike in nearly two weeks and the first fresh work stoppage at Slant this November month. UAW to President Sean Fain, who was outside the plant, said it was a moneymaker and he needed to intensify the pressure on the company. Solantis expressed outrage over the expansion of the strike, as they had done in the past, mentioned that their offer was improved and included substantial wage increases and increased contributions to retirement plans. They also cited that the strike's potential long-term consequences, such as loss of domestic market share, reduced company profits, and profit share bonuses for UW members. We've heard this time and time again. This is the battle going back and forth. Now, what's interesting here is UAW Vice President Rich Boyer, who was leading the Slantis negotiations, he said he reported minimal progress on key issues. Now, that's the including the, the potential relocation of GM 1500 production to Mexico. Uh, that was interesting to read that. So the detail there, they're discussing whether or not to move that back to Mexico and what, how, keep the United States. Also, the future of the Belvedere assembly plant in Illinois. Uh, we covered that, I think it was last year. The Jeep um, had killed one of their models. Can't remember the top of my head which one it was. I want to say Cherokee. Um, but they had killed one of their models, and so the plant's sitting idle, and there's nothing happening in there but that plant. There was some discussion of doing EV stuff as well. So that'll be interesting um, what happens those with those two details. But that is interesting that the relocation of the Ram 1500 production to Mexico. I hadn't heard that one before. I'm guessing you didn't either. So let's go back to the homepage and let's talk about the second strike that happened just this morning. The UAW strike expanded to the key GM SUV plant after an automaker after the automaker posted profit. This is interesting. The UAW extended the strike to include a GM full-size SUV plant in Texas. Now, this is where the plant builds Escalade, GMC Yukon, Chevy Tahoe, and Chevy Suburban. About 5,000 employees walked off the job. Now, when they announced the strike, it was after GM reported favorable earnings for the third quarter. So was it no bucks, no trucks is their, their, the UAW standpoint this time period. The strike occurred shortly after GM reported earnings that exceeded Wall Street expectations. So GM reported earnings that exceeded the Wall Street expectation. I think that's really critical to, to point that out because that's, I could see where the UW is upset about that. I mean, you post record, you beat expectations, and all of a sudden it's like, what, what's going on over here? So uh, once again, Sean Fain expressed, emphasized that record profits should result in record contracts. It should be noted that GM's recorded, reported profits for the quarter had actually declined, but they beat Wall Street expectations. So there's some nuances going on there. GM revealed that the strike had already resulted in $800 million of loss production, including $200 million in the third quarter before the strike at the Arlington plant. Now, GM expressed its disappointment of strikes, setting its negative impact on team members, dealers, suppliers, and the communities dependent on GM. That's another factor that people don't always get in this idea of the strike is that, hey, it's not going to impact me. It's over there. It's over there in Michigan and or in Texas, whatever. Well, actually, the strike's happening across the country. There's some maps on autonews.com I shared in previous videos where suppliers, uh, parts suppliers throughout the country are being impacted and dealers can be impacted. And remember, these dealers are the ones who sponsor your local softball team. They they buy jerseys for the you know the um, football teams. And so this is this is an issue. Now, as a result of the strikes, over 45,000 UAW members at the trade automakers have been on strike. That's approximately 31% of union members governed by the expired contracts are currently on strike. Additionally, about 5,000 workers, roughly 7,000 individuals have been laid off due to ripple effects of those strikes. So we're looking at over 50,000 people have been impacted by this already, directly impacted by this. 
GM says it's lost $800 million in production, but they beat Wall Street ex expectations, which caused the UAW to respond with the expansion of the strike. Lots of, lots of ups in the plan. So the strike at Arlington follows a recent strike to keep Zelensky's plant in Sterling Heights, which we talked about earlier in this video. There's also a walkout at the Kentucky truck plant. That's the, the Super Duty plant that generates $25 billion annual revenue for Ford Motor Company. Um, it's the new phase. They're not waiting until Fridays. They're going to strike whenever, anytime, any place. And so this is um, really going to be impactful moving forward. There's a lot of discussions about the future of EVs and the future of EV um, battery plants, uh, building those batteries, and who's going to be in charge of those. Is that going to be union member or not union member? Uh, I can see that being a big issue. Uh, EVs are really interesting in the marketplace at the moment. We're seeing a lot of slowing sales for those. We're seeing uh, Ford and GM has actually cut shifts recently on, on EVs. And, but the UW sees that as part of the future because all these mandates from the government. So there's just a lot of things in play with that. And I don't know if there's any good solution to resolving that. Because the other thing that with EVs too is they re require less labor to build them. So there, there's some things going on there. Now I want to get back to the, the RAM and the, the GM plant for a couple of things, future news stuff. So next spring, RAM is supposed to launch a new RAM 1500. They've also announced that they're pulling out of SEMA, though, and they're going to pull out some other the, the LA Auto Show because they're citing the losses from the strike. And so what I'm curious about is will the RAM 1500, the new one, be delayed coming to production because suppliers won't have the parts coming in because they're not going to be so much producing so much because of all the delays of, with impacting the UAW strike? Will it impact the plant? I mean, the plant's got to get changed over. It's got to re get retooled. you got to get through the assembly line. That plant's on strike. You can't get that truck going through the assembly line. You can't build more prototypes. That's going to be a really interesting question. You also have the GM full-size SUVs. We know that there is a new Tahoe coming. We know there's a new Yukon coming. We know there's a Suburban probably coming. New Escalade probably coming. They're going to make some changes to those models. And so when that's impacted as well, Will those new models take longer to come out to production? And will consumers be impacted by that who are trying to buy the latest, greatest, newest version of whatever the vehicle they want to buy? And so that could be impacted as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, I expect some few more expansions. Um, but we're already seeing key plants getting uh, targeted. And so we're going to start seeing an even more slowdown on the overall economy and the automakers and the suppliers and the guys, uh, mom and pops who deliver vehicles, the companies delivered the vehicles. So it's just going to be a gigantic mess. And hopefully it gets, gets resolved soon. So for more strike information, keep, keep track of this channel. I, I like to cover it because I think it's really important to consumers. I think it's really important to talk about. I'll check out the videos over here and website down below, pickuptrucktalk.com. I'll put links um, down below in the description to those stories. You want to read more about those. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.